we'll get ourselves started here this morning. My name is Brock Zeman. I am uh, a life coach. I'm a business coach. I'm a real estate agent, and I'm a dad. Very excited to be here this morning with you. Um, today we got. A I'm going back to the Mark Twain days here. I'm going to read to you a passage on Mark Twain. But one of the main things why people always ask me and says, "Hey, Brock." And Charlie, you're absolutely right. Larry Sprinkle got it wrong again on the weather. So a lot of times people say, Brock, you even do this on the holidays? And for those that know my story, I share with them every single time the situation. I say to them, yes, I can be positive. I can motivate. I hopefully can inspire. I can create opportunities even on the holidays because I drank on the holidays. Holidays was a big drinking day. Sunday nights was like, oh, I don't have to work tomorrow. I can drink. And it's a great day to hang out. It's a great day to party. So I've learned throughout my life <clears throat> when I changed my season that I can motivate and inspire just as much as I drink. So that's why we do it. Even literally, if Christmas falls Monday through Friday, we will be on here. And it's because I feel in life we every single day there's opportunities and every single day there's challenges. So today, maybe there's something on our conversation that you might hear from somebody that could help you and inspire you and take you for wherever you need to be to grow today, even on a holiday. So that's why we're always here on holidays. So thank you for taking time with us in Facebook. Thank you for taking time to be with us here in Zoom on this holiday to start your morning, whatever that might look like. So um, I'm going to shift this over to the gallery side here. So here's the topic that I have today. And this is a passage that I read. It's part of, um, I have each and every morning in my prayer book. And it's Mark Twain. And my father sent this to me. I was actually sharing it with him at church yesterday. I have a book and it's from September of 2009. And I still have it today. And it's pretty much beat up, but it, it serves its purpose for me each and every morning. And the, and the passage goes like this. And I want you guys to really think about this, okay? We're all old enough to think about this exact passage and where our future lies. The passage says this, Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off your bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. And each morning I get to read that, and each morning there's a bunch of things that I read, but people, I was just actually, um, I was talking to Mike last night, he's like, what do you do in the morning? Like, what goes on? And literally, that is one of the passages that I read every single morning. And I say to myself, 20 years from now, I'll be 64 years old. And then I think 20 years ago, I was 24 years old. And I think about where my life was. I think about today and I think about where it might be in the very big future. And I, I was talking to Wendy just the other day and I said to her, I said, where do you want to be in three years from now? I am literally pretty much every single day thinking about where my life will be and what can I do today to make it better? What can I do? Because when I read that, am I dreaming big enough? Am I exploring inside my brain big enough? Am I discovering opportunities that could be in front of me today? Yesterday, I had some really good conversations with Mike and his wife, Lee, and Wendy and I, and we were just talking about anything and everything you possibly can imagine. And I just appreciate it so much because when you get to let your brain explore, when you get to let your brain dream and let your mind wander, maybe today on this holiday, you have an opportunity to find a quiet space. And I encourage you to do this. It's a very, very challenging because limiting beliefs come inside of our brain. And limiting beliefs tell us that we can't do things, or maybe that's too crazy. Sometimes I say things and it's like, I don't know, Brock, people are probably going to think of me pretty weird. It's in those very moments where I say to myself, hmm, maybe you're on to something. Let me keep thinking about this. Let me keep dreaming about this. Let me keep exploring and discovering things that maybe, huh, 
who do I know that possibly could even help me or is in that position? Because I believe to be successful or to achieve what you want to achieve or get to the goals that you want to get to, you need to be surrounded by those people. You need to have conversations with those types of people. Because if you want to have whatever it is that, that's a dream or a goal or a desire in your life, you probably would like to have conversations with those people to understand and to let your brain think that that is possible because that person really did or is doing what you want to do. And so today, when you're in your alone time, when you're in your quiet time, and it just needs to be three minutes, maybe five minutes if you really get you know a little crazy today, but just dream. Think about where you're going to be. Think about where you want to be. Think about that. The, remove those limiting beliefs. Write it down if you get really crazy on your in a journal. Write down some of the things where you could imagine yourself and fath- can't even fathom. Maybe I have this car. Maybe I'm in this relationship. Maybe my kids are doing this. Whatever it might be. Maybe I'm helping. I'm in the community. I'm doing things. There's people on here who I've had conversations with that want to, in, that are inspired to be able to be um, in, in the real estate. They want to be a health coach. They want to be able to grow their business. They want to be in retail. They want to take their business to their family on a trip. These are all things that allow your brain to explore and dream. And the, in part of our brain allows those endorphins to grow. And that's how adrenaline takes place and energy and motivation and drive. And then you put a plan in place. And that's why when I read this and every single day, when I read these final things, <clears throat> explore, dream, and discover. What does that mean to you? Only you can answer that question because for me, it means something totally different than what it could mean to you. So I hope you found something to be able to take away from today. I hope you found something that you can use on this holiday to take yourself into a a new place, a dreaming place, an exploring place, and discover what that is. And if you really get excited, feel free to share it with me. like Because I love it when people tell me their dreams and they explore and be like, hey, Brock, who do you know that I should talk to that could help me with this? Just like I'm constantly online looking at videos and I hunt them down. I find them like my coach I got from Justin and I hunted him down. And next thing you know, we're texting each other. Like I couldn't imagine that three months ago, months ago, I didn't even know the guy. And now I'm texting him because of conversations. He's liking my posts. I decided to explore. I decided to dream. And then I discovered him. So I challenge you to do that today, too. All right, guys, with that being said, good morning again, everybody. And we're going to bring on, oh, let's see what his name is today. I want to make sure I, Mike Demand. So we have Monday mornings with Mike. And uh, like I said, Mike uh, and I had a really good conversation. His, him and his wife came over last night and just <clears throat> really, really had a good conversation. And then we kind of, we, we we brought in some different things about our mindset and different things. And one of the words that we we, we recalled when we talk this morning, because we talk at eight o'clock, um, I'm going to let him take over and share his insight for the word that we picked out of all the entire conversation. This was the one word that he chose today. And I thought that was, it was a really good word. So good morning, Mike. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, Monday morning, I'm ready to rock and roll. Good man. <clears throat> so kind of share with us a little bit about now, uh, elaborate. And if you're in a good position and, and uh, you know, can come to video, that would be great. If not, no worries. But um, wanted to, you want to just share with us the word that you picked out from yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm not in a position for video right now. Uh, <laughs> You're probably topless, so we'll keep it at that, buddy. So go ahead. What, do you, what was the word that you picked out yesterday? Because I, I loved it. Um, well, my thought was be prepared because that was one of the things that we had talked about last night. And I was saying earlier with you that, that um, I just had to be listening to the radio and it was on a retirement investment thing. And they were talking about being prepared and it it was just a, a theme like it yesterday that got me thinking because is it's like not only about being prepared relative to real estate, but even like a bigger picture. Like we've talked about the real estate market pivoting and shifting and are you, what are we doing to go with the change and what are you doing? Um, but it's a matter of like being prepared 
even for where the market is going to be going, mm -hmm. but where are we going to be going? Are we prepared even for like um, when the market starts to shift back? How are we changing our listing presentations, our buyer presentations? Are we prepared for what's coming up? Um, more so, I'm, I think it more different from like a pivoting point of view is like, what is a longer term plan? And so I said to myself, like this last week, without getting into detail, um, again, I had two listing presentations, got them both. And then they turned around literally within like a couple of hours, weird, weird things happened. And I didn't have them. And it's like, it used to be like, even up to about four five, six months ago, you got a listing and the question was, well, is it going to sell in one or two days or is it going to sell before it even hits the market? And now it's like, God, am I even going to be able to get this thing onto the market after I have the listing agreement signed? Um, so it's preparing yourself for the shift that's coming, but preparing yourself from a real estate point of view, from a, a financial point of view, from a family point of view, from a mental health point of view, to be able to deal with the challenge that we have now, but even preparing yourself for what's coming up and where's the market heading to and, and how are we going to be ready for what's coming up? Because at some point the market's going to shift back around. So are we prepared for mm -hmm. what we're going to do when that happens? So what changes are we making in our life to help ourselves better prepare for the situation we're in? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And for those that don't know a little bit about my past in reference to be prepared. So I'm an Eagle Scout. And if you don't know this, the Boy Scout motto is be prepared. And when I learned it, when I was about 16 years old about being prepared, you know, when we were talking last night, like literally I will have my, my parents taught this to me that we're, we're Catholic and we're from upstate New York. So it, it would be normal for family members to just pop by. It'd be normal for people to spontaneously come over our house. And we had a large family, so there will always be something. And I remember my dad telling this to me. He said, I said, Dad, how, what are we going to do? These people showed up for dinner. And that was like a challenge to him. I don't know. And that's probably where, like, when I start digging back to my roots, I start thinking, I'm like, man, this is where I get it from. This is what I'm going to be prepared. But the simplest things. Okay. And I share this. And that's why I love the topic my pick today was like, even the littlest things. He's like, I put stuff in the freezer. I went to the store and at the time period, we, it was called Maine's cash and carry where they would sell it by the bulk. And he would have hamburger meat. And my mom would have extra pasta on hand. And we were prepared to feed like freaking 20 people at any given point. And we came from a poor town. Like we came from a poor, like my dad was a postal worker. My mom like worked in the cafeteria, but we were always prepared. I was like looking back at it now, like there was never a time period that my parents would say, all right, we got to run to the store. We don't have this. Like my dad had like cases of beer in like certain areas of the house. Like I had no idea about, we had canned goods, we had noodles, we had pasta, we had hamburger meat, hot dogs. Like we had all this stuff and we were always prepared. And I remember that at a young age. And then when I went in the Boy Scouts and I, and I challenged people today, like if somebody called you up today, okay, if you're like, well, I don't know what to do today, Brock, it's a holiday. I'm going to tell you this, okay, Mike and I were talking about this, like, I want you to pretend today somebody's going to call you up and say, hey, my wife and I were thinking that we need to sell our house and it's a $1.5 million home. And they say, I'm on vacation. I go out of town tomorrow. Can you come out today at three o'clock? How many of you have a listing presentation ready to rock and roll? How many of you have a listing packet, your testimonials ready, your MOGs, your residential property disclosures? How many of you have your whole listing packet prepared to rock and roll? Or would you be going frantic right now of trying to prepare for it? How many of you on the buyer consultation side, if somebody says, hey, Brock, I need, I saw a property that came up for this week and I'm off today. I'd like to go out today to go take a look at it. My wife and I are free today at one o'clock. How many of you are how many of you are are free or, or are prepared to do that? And so, Mike, I thought that was a really good topic of conversation. Then it led into the whole 
financial piece. How many of you are prepared financially? What do your financial goals look like? And sometimes it's scary to think about, but you know, like you said, Mike, I mean, the shift is going to happen. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And you know, we're in a job that unfortunately we are 1099 and we're hundred percent in commission. So we can't fall back on like another job unless we decide, like people say, well, I'm going to, I have to get a job. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. I thought you had a job. No, I have to get a W2. And so we want to prepare you so you don't have to do that. Mike, anything you want to add, buddy? No, um, no, I think you covered it well. I love the whole being prepared. Although I learned it in Boy Scouts at like nine, you had to get it to 16. But I did love the, the story about being prepared with the food because that is a great example. So no, I got nothing else to add. Cool, man. I really, really enjoyed your topic. That was a, it was a good one because I, I think a lot of us aren't prepared. And we get ourselves in a reactive position instead of proactive position. So I challenge you today. That's why I like holidays. Holidays allow some time for us to slow down and to be able to, you know, maybe catch up on some little things. I, I put it in the post the other day. Like, I'm not expecting you to work or share like, hey, you need to work on the holiday at 100% like it's a normal day. Just give yourself a 50% like today, I'm going to work till about 12, 1230. And then I'm going to spend some family time. I'm going to spend some time like relaxing. I relaxed yesterday, knowing that I forecast in my this upcoming week. I've already had to talk to Greg and Christian about rearranging some things this week. I've, I've already started to prepare for the week ahead. Use that today. So you're not you know scrambling all, all week this week trying to play catch up. So great stuff today. Guys, I really appreciate those in the Facebook world who are with us here this morning. Thank you so much for taking time. We're going to keep things rocking and rolling here in Zoom world. And so uh, Facebook, we will see you tomorrow morning at uh, 8.15. We will be here. So please join us tomorrow at 8.15. And uh, looking forward to seeing everybody there in the Facebook world. 